ready for the countdown. This week's message is dedicated to uh, my nephew Kamal home from school, to my sons, and to everyone around the world not able to get home for Thanksgiving. Home sweet home. Have you ever just wanted to go home? Have you ever just wanted to be at home? Have you ever yearned for that feeling of pulling into the driveway after a long week or for a holiday? You know those days when you say to yourself, if I can just get in the house, I can't wait to take those socks and shoes off. Like Randall on This Is Us, you can't wait to take these clothes off. Sometimes you plop on the bed with the shoes on. You know what I'm talking about? Or is it just me? Sometimes I just want to be home. Sometimes I don't want to deal with the outside world. I don't want another Zoom meeting. Sometimes I just want to be in the house. I don't want to stop by the grocery store on the way home. I just want to be home. There are things at home that you won't find anywhere else, no matter how nice it is. I like soft baked chips ahoy and Oreos, but there are no cookies like my nephew's Malik's cookies. I think he can beat Bobby Flay. No matter how many stars the hotel is, there is no bed like yo bed. No matter how world-class the chef is, there is no meal like a home-cooked meal. When you know someone put their heart in it and put their foot in it. Luther Vandross said it like this, a chair is still a chair, even when there's no one sitting there. But a chair is not a house, and a house is not a home. In fact, Dorothy from The Wiz or The Wizard of Oz, whatever is your preference, had it right when she said, there's no place like home. And then there's that famous song from The Wiz, when I think of home, I think of a place where there's love overflowing. I wish I was home. I wish I was back there. There's something about being home. You see familiar people at home. You hear familiar sounds at home. Whether you know it or not, your home has a certain smell. And don't get me talking about the smell of the food at home. You know that smell when something is cooking on the stove or still baking in the oven? We're going to have a lot of that this week for sure. Let me offer another perspective and point of view, though. Have you ever wanted to go home but couldn't? This week is Thanksgiving, or as Canadians say, American Thanksgiving. Typically, it is the most traveled and traffic time of the year. But this year is going to be different. In fact, the CDC is recommending Americans not to travel during Thanksgiving week. You know, COVID-19. According to Johns Hopkins University, more than 250,000 people have died from COVID-19 in the United States. More than 11.5 million people have been diagnosed with the virus, and the United States has set several new daily records for hospitalizations this week. While the White House has downplayed the coronavirus and we are still in post-election election drama, 
and we still see people out in these streets without a mask, I want to tell you like little Paisley tells me, you know COVID is a thing, right? And it is a matter of life and death. My brothers and sisters, if you have to travel this week to f see family and friends and celebrate the holiday season, do me a favor, wear your mask. Do me a favor, don't get too close up on me or close on the people around you. Six feet, give me some space. You breathing on my neck. As we turn our attention to the text for this morning, we uh, see the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe, tribe of Manasseh who have had to make a home away from home. Maybe you're not familiar with Joshua chapter 22, but how do I know the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh have had to make a home away from home? I'm glad you asked. The first clue was in verse number four. Listen to what it says. Now that the Lord your God has given them rest as he promised, return to your homes in the land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side of the Jordan. The second clue was in verse number two, six, sorry, verse number six. Then Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their homes. The third clue, when Joshua sent them home, he blessed them, saying, return to your homes. This passage is all about returning home. And somebody needs to hear me today. The Lord is calling somebody home, not necessarily from life to reward, but back to him. This story that ends in Joshua chapter 22 actually begins in Numbers 32. It was there that the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh asked Moses if they could have land and settle on the east side of the Jordan. We'll come back to that in a little while. A little while. Listen to their Request. They came up to Moses and said, we would like to build pens here for our livestock and cities for our women and children. But we will arm ourselves and go ahead of the Israelites until we have brought them to their place. Meanwhile, our women and children will live in fortified cities for protection from the inhabitants of the land. We will not return to our homes until all the Israelites have received their inheritance. We will not receive any inheritance with them because our inheritance has come to us on the east side of the Jordan. That's where it all started. But watch this. That happened in Numbers 32, but our text for today is Joshua 22. If you want to do the math, that's 61 chapters and seven years since they made this request. That's 61 chapters and seven years since they've been home. My point is this. You may have had to wait for a long period of time. It may have been 61 chapters in your life, over a period of seven years, perhaps more. But there is coming a time when the waiting period is over. You heard, you know this one, he may not come when you want him, but God is always right on time. Listen, God, there is a gestation period for God's blessings. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I learned something new when I was studying this passage. Don't be afraid of learning something new. What I learned was that not all of the tribes of Israel settled on the west side of the Jordan. You see, because there was so much emphasis on the crossing of the Jordan River, all my life, from Sunday school up to even seminary, all my life there was so much emphasis on settling in the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And so the question is, why would the tribes of Manasseh and Gad and Reuben ask to settle on the east 
side instead of the west side. This is not a conversation about the island of Manhattan. It's because, listen, it's because these tribes raised cattle and had a lot of cattle. They had, as we say today, they had cattle cattle. And the land east of the Jordan was spacious and good for raising livestock. The land is described in Deuteronomy 33:13 this way, May the Lord bless his land with the precious dew from heaven above, with the deep waters that lie below, with the best the sun brings forth and the finest moon can yield, with the choicest gifts of the ancient mountains and the fruitfulness of the everlasting hills. Listen, I don't know how you are hearing it, but that sounds pretty good to me. And then it dawned on me. I was surprised that they settled in the east. I was, especially in light of the fact that the west side of the Jordan River is called the promised land and the land flowing with milk and honey. But as we are getting ready and prepared for Thanksgiving, I remember uh, my grandmother was the matriarch of our family. She passed a few years ago, and before she ate any meal, she would say this verse, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and those and they that dwell therein. That's Psalm 24, verse 1, if you don't know it. This is my point. It doesn't matter if they settled on the east side of the Jordan or the west side of the Jordan or for this matter, the north or the south. It all belongs to God. And the fact is, the blessings of God knows no boundaries. Let me say that again because that's good. I need you to get that in your spirit. The blessings of God knows no boundaries. And if you didn't already know it, I'm into my first point. And my first point is home is where you hang your hat. In other words, wherever God is blessing you, that's where home is. And God's blessings know no boundaries. They may have had to settle on the west side, but they may have not settled on the west side, but they recognized that God had blessed the land in the east. Is there anybody listening to me this morning who knows that the blessing of God is not just connected to a place but the blessing is connected to God's presence. Mm, that's real good. I can be anywhere in the world. I can be in Accra. I can be in Nairobi. I can be in Halifax. I can be in Cincinnati. I can be, it doesn't matter where I am, wherever the presence of God is, that's where the blessing is. And that is home. There are times in my life where I wanted to be in one place or another or another place or another place, but I've learned now that wherever God is planted me and is placing me, that there's going to be a blessing that God has prepared for me. Watch this. When God designs and designates a place for you, there is a special blessing, a, a special anointing, a special favor in that place with your name on it. Not on the manuscript. I'm reminded of Elijah by the brook. Nobody was out there. He was all by himself. It wasn't even near a city. But God told him to go there. And guess what? God blessed him in that place in the midst of a famine. My second point is this. Not only is home where you hang your hat. In other words, home is where the presence of God is, but home is also where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. Joshua gives uh, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh an accommodation in verses 3 and 4. Then he offers exhortation in verse 5. This is what it says. I'm sending you home. You have fought valiantly. We could not have done it without you. But when you get home, be careful to keep the command and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you. And in case you weren't sure, this is the law. To love the Lord your God 
to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commands, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. If you want to find out where home is, uh, but if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will find him if you seek him with all of your heart and with all of your soul. And when you are in distress and these things have happened to you, then in later days you will return to the Lord your God and obey him. For the Lord your God is a merciful God. He will not abandon or destroy you or forget the covenant with your ancestors. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart with all of your soul and with all of your strength. By implication, this is what this means. The Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh have kept the commands of, the, of God the entire time while they were away from home. But since they honored the Lord and loved the Lord with their whole hearts, God was in their hearts. But now Moses is telling them, you have fought the good fight. You have finished the race. It's time for you to go home. Watch this. I know a lot of people spend a lot of energy and time, and they think a lot of people who can uh, repeat scripture and rehearse scripture. Listen, if it's not in your heart, I don't want to hear it out of your mouth. In other words, show me better than how you can tell me. Home is where the heart is, and hopefully God is in your heart. Finally, charity begins at home. Not only is home where you hang your hat, not only is home where the heart is, but Joshua 22 teaches me that charity begins at home. Mm, for a long time now, this is what it says, uh, for a long time now to this very day, you have not deserted the other Israelites, but have carried out the mission the Lord your God gave you. I'm loving this because even though they have established that their blessing is on the east side of the Jordan, and even though their women and children are already settled, the Bible says that they did not desert the other Israelites. This lets me know that home isn't just a place, but home is also about your people. People nowadays think that home is about a place, what I have, what I worked for my property, my land. But let me tell you, you can have houses and land and things, but if you don't have anybody to share it with, all of your possessions don't mean a thing. Old school song, uh, there are some things I do not have. There are some places I may not go, but this one thing. And the chorus goes, yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my song. Home is about a place, but home is also about your people. I don't care how big you get. Never forget your people. Doesn't matter how many raises and promotions you attain. Never forget your people. Don't think that you pulled yourself up by your own bootstraps. It doesn't matter how many certificates and degrees you earn. There was a teacher who taught you how to add one plus one and multiply three times three. There was an English teacher who taught you how to make your subject and verbs agree. Never forget your people. We need to recognize that my inheritance is connected to your inheritance and your inheritance is connected to my inheritance. 
That's why if one of us is struggling or has an issue, we all have an issue. If the government is playing games in one area of the country, if there is no good water to drink in Flint, Michigan, then I should not be satisfied as long as my tap is okay until the people in Flint, Michigan have clean water to drink. And we also have to think this way. We have to think beyond our local news that comes on at five o'clock, wherever you may live, because there are issues happening all over the globe, all over the planet. And what happens is we get so fixated on what's going on in our world, our little world, that we lose track of what's going on in the world at large. Charity begins at home. We have to learn how to look out for each other. Either learn it or remember it. Be reminded of it. Take care of one another. All for one and, yep, one for all. The Reubenites, Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh are commended because they did not desert their fellow Israelites. So this week is going to be a different kind of week. Thanksgiving may look differently, but a part of the charity begins at home is placing family over everything else. And even if you can't be in the same house, even if you're not able to travel this year, there is a connection that you have with your loved ones that is goes beyond physical presence. And if you've been watching the news, um, they've been talking a lot about vaccine. Pfizer has one. There's another company that's ready um, to, to release their vaccine. 95% effectiveness rate. And hear me again, my brothers and sisters. I talked about COVID at the intro of this message. Please remember COVID is a thing. Please be safe. Please wear your mask. Look, I got mine right here. You may not like what's on it, Dallas Cowboys, but it's a mask. Protect yourself. Protect others. Social distance. The vaccine is coming. It's not here yet. There's no promise of when it is coming, but we know that it is in development. Now, what does this have to do with the message? What does this have to do with the gospel? You do know that there is a vaccine that has already been approved. Not necessarily for COVID-19, but for your eternal life. I'm talking about Jesus and his sacrifice for us with his blood. This is the vaccine that protects us and covers us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Now, I believe in science. I don't want you to over-spiritualize this. The vaccine for COVID-19 is coming, but the vaccine for your eternal life is already here, and you can have it today. Home sweet home. Why don't you come home and be a part of this global family where we are all connected by the blood of Jesus? Listen, the last point was charity begins at home. I want to invite you, if you yourself or if you know someone who is struggling during this Thanksgiving season and needs some love, needs some charity, needs some grace, Please give us a call at Bless to Bless today. We would love to bless you. We would love to be a blessing to you so that you could know about the love of Jesus Christ in a tangible way. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody, and I'll see you next week, same time, same station. God bless.